Hello. Oh, yay. Hello. I see Cease is here. Is that Cecilia? Oh, my gosh. So excited. Gina says hello. This is fantastic. Welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Oh, I wish this was a little more out of the way. Let's see if I can convince it to be. I don't know about that. Might not. It's part of the setup that we need for the camera so that we can see the stuff on the desk today. Uh, super excited. Um, welcome. My name is Alice Bull and I run the membership group for scrapbookers at scraphappy.org. And I was really excited. We are in the middle of one of our big signature challenges this month. Thank you so much. The thumbs up just really, you know. Um, we're in one of our big signature challenges. It's called Load, Lay Out a Day. And every single day for a whole month, we actually make a scrapbook page. And we always have a really fun theme. This month, our theme is the Royals. So all of our prompts are inspired by something related to royalty. And we have just been having a fantastic time scrapbooking inspired by that. The goal is not to scrapbook royalty, although I will confess, I actually did a page about royalty um, during this challenge, which normally, I don't because I'm telling my own stories. The goal is to tell your own stories. And so it's been kind of interesting because I actually did a page about royalty and I have all kinds of fun things to show you. I'm hoping that this works. I haven't actually. Oh, yeah, it totally looks like it's going to work. OK, um, do you guys want to take a peek through my pages before we dive into what we're going to do today? Um, I'll just give you a little quick little peek. Maybe just give me like a yeah or a little comment in the the comments there. Good afternoon, says Florence. So yeah, if you wanna have a quick peek through my layouts, maybe we'll do that because the topic of our little chat today, we're gonna to be talking about stencils, making fun backgrounds with stencils. It was really inspired by a page that I created way back on day three of October. I can't believe it's already the 27th today. So I have 26 layouts right here, ready to show you. Carrie says, good afternoon and yes. So I'll take that. Carrie, we're doing this for you. <laughs> so here we go. Um, is this working? Did this go? Ah, there we go. Fantastic. Um, let's move this back just a little bit. Okay, so this is my page from yesterday. And you can see I did some stamping on the sides of it. Really excited. This one was inspired by charity, the Royals with charity. Um, and the question was, how do you give back to your community? And for technique, do something like hands on like mixed media or something. So I did my little bit of stamping. Uh, this day here was um, inspired by ball gowns. And oh my gosh, guys, this is my mom on her first birthday. It is like so sweet, so, so sweet. So this is my mom on her first birthday and I wanted to, you know, scrapbook a page with these pictures. And I actually, and to, part of our prompt that day was to scrapbook either like a formal occasion and to use ribbon. So we always have a story prompt and a technique-ish type prompt. So yeah. Oh, thanks so much. I love, love, love the Beta Sigma Phi page. Thank you so much. If you're a Beta Sigma Phi, you have to like let me know. We have to chat sometimes. Yeah, because I did the yellow flowers because the yellow rose is the symbol of our group. So um and then this one here, oh my gosh, um, was inspired by fairy tales. So talking about important relationships and using a fairy tale symbol. And of course you don't have to do the prompts, like you don't have to use them. And lots of times I'm kind of like prompt adjacent, not, not necessarily right on the prompt. So I talked here about family and this is like an old picture because we never take pictures. We always forget to take pictures and it's just something that happens. So I was really excited when we did take this picture. I'm like, guys, we need to do one. So I instigated it. It actually happened. And like, that is my son who just turned 20 and he is like a teeny tiny baby. So 
<laughs> yeah. Oh, Janine, I'm your beta. That is so awesome. Okay, well, I'm super excited. I'm your Beta Sigma Phi sister. Well, Beta Sigma Phi is an organization that is all over the world, and they have chapters of women everywhere. And I'm so excited to when I get to like know different Beta Sigma Phi members. I've been in the group for over 20 years now and I love it. I love it so much. No, 19 years, 19 years. I joined when my son was one year old. Okay. And you can see, I've got a little crown on this one. This one here was inspired by William and Harry, the brothers, um, talk about siblings or another relationship. Do you get along? Use bigger or smaller elements. I totally forgot the bigger, smaller elements. Sometimes when I'm making the page, it's like, woo, prompt is gone. But I did use this paper that I had created with a stencil. So I'm going to just set this one over here because we might come back to that after since uh, we're kind of on this topic today. Uh, this one here was inspired by the fact that Windsor Castle is near Legoland Windsor and kind of that whole thing. There's even like a famous picture that kind of people take with the castle and the Lego and stuff. Anyways, I made this page about our house. It was built with these insulated concrete bricks and they fit together like Legos. And so that was the inspiration for my page that day. This one here was inspired by uh, dolphins. And so we did like a water page and possibly use white embossing powder or glitter. Um, I didn't use white embossing powder, but I did use sequins. Does that count? It's shiny. <laughs> um, and I had fun filling in this die cut template. Well, I kind of had fun. Okay, so I like the look, but it's not really fun, right? It's kind of like, oh, <laughs> kind of a pain, but I love it so much. So uh, this one was talking about swans. And, um, so a relationship with animals using animal tracks or something. And I just did everything about chickens. I found this picture of me as a little tyke and I was with the little baby chickens and now I'm a crazy obsessive chicken lady. So it was all good. So that was kind of fun. Uh, next up, this one was r related to, oh no, that one wasn't swans. So that was a, oh, horses and animals. That was that day. Cause this day was actually about the swans. And, um, this one was about birds or, and using feathers. So I actually used one of my new chicken stamps that I had and this fabulous paper and it is, um, photo play paper. So I've been having fun with their stuff and of course chicken pages. This one was inspired by the military and uniforms. And as a kid, I was in cadet. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> um, uh, I just said that pattern paper is perfect and oh my god, you're so adorable. <laughs> like, the, the little chicken one, I think that that's what she was talking about when I was like a teeny tiny. So this is me and cadets and I had a lot of lessons that you learn in cadets and it was like really surprising that I loved it and I was really excited for this because I needed some paper that was like burgundy and it's not really a color that I have a bunch of, but I had this old collection that I have been sitting on not using and it is Teresa Collins from like 2014 or something and so I was really excited to finally use some of that. Now here's the page that I mentioned. I did a page that was actually about royalty because Canada just released their official their new official portrait of the queen. This is taken last year, but this is the new, they just released it. You can actually download it from the government of Canada website. So I was excited about that. And I was able to kind of talk about the queen, how I didn't really feel connected. I kind of didn't understand her. And then partly like through watching the crown, I really understand her dedication and you know so I ended up doing that but our inspiration that day was the a diamond diamond jubilee scrapbook of celebration use some sparkle I went all out on the sparkle you can see I've got some sparkle around here I've got sparkle around the whole page and oh my gosh I love it okay this one was your home is your castle I remember the topic for this one I don't even have to peek and look and to use like some kind of home type embellishment, house icons, story of your home. 
this is the story of our first house. And the only reason I had this picture was because we were in the middle of painting it and we wanted to show the progress at the time. So it was the little green, no, blue house because we painted it blue. And I talked about it. It was a tiny little house, but it was our home. And <laughs> thank you. The queen page has beautiful colors. Uh, this one is our, um, it was inspired by the queenly mechanic. So the queen was actually a mechanic during the war, like literally Queen Elizabeth II mechanic during the war. She loves vehicles. She loves fixing on vehicles. And so um, this one was kind of inspired by something unconventional, something unexpected. Um, you're defying conventions or you can go vice versa and choose to go with conventions and use something unconventional. And so I did this page with this paper collection. I think it's Simple Stories. Pretty sure it's Simple Stories, which is beautiful. Um, and what is against the convention? Well, I cut the paper with my thing and I kind of layered over the paper. It's a little unconventional. People sometimes struggle with these kind of scenic backgrounds, but I think they're super fun. And it's just finding the way to make your pictures fit. And I really thought that was fun. Okay, next up. Okay, we're getting to the end so that we can actually do some of this stuff. But hopefully you're enjoying this. Um, I'm loving the flashback. Uh, the Royals Day 14 was about royal feasts. So, of course, in Canada, we actually had our Thanksgiving Day. Um, we had a very small get together because there was only eight of us that got together. My mom and dad's, which is good for COVID, but kind of sad when you love the whole big family thing. You know that other picture I showed you? There was a lot more than eight of us there. But um, this was really fun because uh, this paper is from Cartabella, I think. And it is just like the prettiest, prettiest paper ever. And I love the texture of Cartabella paper. Like big fan, big, big fan. And it's always just gorgeous. So this one, um, I think the papers and the supplies were actually from my scrap room kit. So hint, hint, nod, nod. Scrap room kits, super fun, fabulous. I've been loving them so much and they have just been a joy for me to use. Um, this one here was talking about the British Empire and there was like a quote, like the sun never sets on the British Empire. So scrapbook about something big, vast, important, or use a powerful title or quote. So my title was a million miles away because my son moved away. I was heartbroken. I tried not to show it at the time so that he could go and hop on the plane and be like, okay, but then this is like five seconds later in the car. And I actually used my Google map to kind of show just how far. And so it's not technically a million miles. It is 1,354 kilometers, which is still really crazy far. <laughs> oh, thank you. Um, she said, I love the floor plan of your childhood home that you did in your scrapbook U class. Yeah, so that's a class that I actually still have. I, um, I revisit it every once in a while and I think, oh, I should take that down. I should change it. It's from my old website, Scrapbook Wonderland, Alice, Alice in Wonderland. So that was my original online um, home for my scrapbook sharing. And then, um, yeah, I couldn't find pictures of my first childhood home. We lived in this tiny trailer. Like it's like a million, like it's so much smaller than most travel trailers what day that you see going down the highway um, where we first lived. And I just drew a picture of it from my memory because I could remember all these things about the floor plan. And then I showed my mom and she's like, yeah, you got it actually mostly right. <laughs> yeah, she says, no, don't change it or take it down. It's been so freeing for me to do this album. No, I totally won't take it down. Like I wouldn't. And if I was changing it in some way, it would be to move it maybe over to where I am now, but making sure that everybody still had access. So it's the kind of thing, like, I wouldn't want to take that away. I'm really glad that you're enjoying it. Um, the idea for that class was to look at your whole life and be able to make an album. I just know too many people that don't have pages or a story that kind of says, this is me, this is my story. And so, 
the goal was to do 25 pages or you know you can do as you wish of course um but i walk you through 25 pages that if you make these pages you will have like a highlight reel about your life and i just thought that was wonderful so thank you so much for the feedback on that because yeah i do go back and i check on things i'm like oh like i don't know why does everybody else do this okay give me a second here so does everybody do this do you look at stuff that you did old like from before and you think oh that just won't be very good and then when you look back at it you're kind of surprised because it's actually really great <laughs> like that happens to me all the time and C says that sounds like an awesome class um probably going into Christmas I'll do like a little promo for it or something like just to put it out there again I don't do it very often but yeah if if you don't have it yet and then it's like eternal access you can just enjoy at your own time however I encourage you to like pick a time and really just go through and do the little challenges to tell your stories because I think it's great. I would not have done this album without your inspiration. Thank you. Well, you're so welcome. Oh my gosh, that is just so sweet to see. So anybody that is interested, they can get it now. I don't have any discounts available because I wasn't planning on that right now. Um, usually around Christmas. Um, scrapbookwonderland.com slash Y-O-U. And that is where that class is. Okay, let's go back. We'll finish off this. We're almost to the end. We're almost to the page. It's going to inspire our little project for today. Um, this one here was talking about um, Barbados. So Barbados actually was just in the news recently because they declared their independence um, or that they are going to declare their independence from the British Empire. So they are actually planning to leave the British Empire and become a republic. And their goal is to make that happen by next year around this time. So this one was talking about um, your exerting your independence and using products from an independent retailer. And honestly, I don't know if I use products from an independent retailer on here. I found paper that I really liked and I'm like, oh, pretty, <laughs> pretty, pretty. <laughs> but I talked about making my podcast and, you know, why I did it and you know how much I've loved um, listening to podcasts and how I've had like ideas of what I wanted to share on a podcast and oh my gosh okay so I have the funniest thing okay a little side note today is gonna be the day of the side note um, one of the things that I did I just recorded um, the podcast that went out this morning so today is podcast release day new podcast is out and it is the Halloween spooktacular scrapbooking edition I'm loving your podcast thank you so much so to, for this one because it is a Halloween theme I totally played with the music and the sounds in it and hopefully I didn't like go overboard on it. I tried not to go overboard on it to kind of get to the goodness. I wanted to talk about Halloween scrapbooking and some of the tips that you might not be thinking of because I am starting a new Halloween project. So at the end of today, if we have time and I haven't hogged up all the time, I'll kind of show you what my my plan is or talk to you about that. Your podcast is great. Thank you so much, you guys. That is like super sweet because I love doing it. I totally love doing it. So it has just been a joy for me. So I really love that. If, um, yeah, I just appreciate that so much. So yeah, so this podcast thing has just been a joy here. Let me go back to this. So that was a page that I had to do about it. So this is back like way back in March when I first was making officially all the plans. And then of course, like launching didn't happen till August. I kind of had a little scrap smarter experience to kind of sneak in there, but thanks. Oh, you're, you're really good at doing podcasts. I, I, uh, I do a fair bit of editing as I go. Um, are there email reminders about the podcast? No, but there should be. It's literally, okay. So I have an accountability group that I am in now. And it's one of the things that I am, t that we're working on is email accountability. So I will be sending out more consistent emails because I have some people that are helping me achieve that goal. 
So watch for that. Um, Friday five emails, my, my Friday sunshine emails will be heading out. So if you're in my scrap happy membership, you might not actually get those kind of emails because they're kind of like separate from the list, right? So you get your member stuff, but this is like something kind of extra. It's kind of like a little, um, yeah, so extra things. So what you can do is if you want to get onto that list, like I make sure that you kind of don't get duplicates of things because that would be annoying to me. Um, you can go to scraphappy.org slash subscribe. Hold on a second. I have a thing. I forgot that I have a thing. Okay. I have a thing. Scraphappy.org slash subscribe. And you get on the email list so you'll get notified about like free things like these, like happy at home sessions, like the um let's see the scrapbook live free sessions that we do the scrap smarter free sessions that we do so all of the things i do get the member email so member there's like kind of like two lists right so there's the member ones they all have like happy in the beginning or load in the beginning and then there's like the other ones that are just if you're signed up so if you've signed up for this one then you will definitely get those extra little things from time to time Okay, moving on. We're almost there. Stripes, spots, and color. This one was inspired by Royal Fashion, and we talked about the queen's outfits that day and how she always wears certain kind of styles. Talk about your style. Use rainbow of colors or neon. I loved this paper so much. It was like on point for what I wanted, so that was exciting. I worked some spots into it. And uh, definitely it's colorful. So I felt like I fulfilled like my stripes, my spots and my color within the page. So that was super fun. That went a little crooked. That's coming off. Look at that. Chipboard elements, guys. Seriously, chipboard elements. What is it? Oh, Bonnie says, hello from Georgia. Keep up all the fun times. I... I love doing this. So thank you so much, Bonnie. I'm glad that you think this is fun because I sure think it's fun to hang out with other creatives, to see what they're creating and to watch how they create. We're going to get there eventually. Why is this taking so long? This is being painful. I was just going to like throw a little glue on it so I didn't forget. <laughs> it's like, no, you can't have glue. No glue for you. <laughs> I really related to the no soup thing, that, that Seinfeld thing, because, oh my goodness, like soup is like one of my very favorite foods. Okay, next up, this one here was celebrating my friend Dietra's birthday, and we, some of our Scrap Happy members actually hosted an online birthday party for her which was the sweetest thing ever. At one point, we noticed that the pans that were hanging on her wall made her look like she had Mickey ears. So we took screen captures, we shared jokes, we laughed, we blew out candles, we had cupcakes, like a bunch of people had cupcakes. And so this one was inspired by something done in a precise way that's changed. And I talked about the virtual birthday party. Um, use black and gold. I only used the gold. I can't remember what the topic was. I didn't write it down. That's kind of funny. Um, anyways, next one, two lefts make three rights. And this is about inspired by Monaco, something that was different and to use marble, which I totally forgot once I was making the page because it happens. Um, this one is fun. And actually, if you saw this page online, like if you're in the membership and you're in the gallery and you've seen it, you haven't seen the full page because, hi Deidre, I just shared your birthday page. I'm so excited um, that you haven't seen the full page because uh, I actually used little flip flaps here so that I could add more photos. And I just think these are genius. I love them so much. So you would have seen like the under part of this page, but you wouldn't have seen that I had all these extra photos to go with it. So super fun. And this is a stencil background. So we're going to set this to the side for right now too. And here was one that I did about my birthday and it was about being queen for a day. So that was my day. That literally was my birthday, October 7th. This one, can you see the difference? Uh, which totally makes me think of a commercial. Does everybody know that commercial? Because it's like, what was it? Um, 
some kind of like washing detergent or something. <laughs> um, Prince Charles and his big ears talking about the story of physical features. Use the icon of a person. So I've got my little people icon here. And I talked about my kids and how when they were little, people always thought they were twins until they saw them standing. Like if they saw them sitting or in a grocery cart or something, they're like, oh, are they twins? And I'm like, no. I was always surprised by it. And then um, they would stand up and like Joe was a foot taller, I think, or a head taller. Um, this is a stencil background. So we're just going to set that one aside. Here we go with one that's like an accidental queen. So the queen kind of wasn't directly in line for the throne. But um, when her uncle abdicated, then she kind of bumped up the list. So we talked about that. And then we talk about a path that you've taken by accident and maybe using happy accidents on your page. So I'll confess, I actually had this background that I had sprayed and misted sitting aside because I made it when I was making something else. Maybe the colors weren't right. Maybe I didn't get the style just right at the time, but I set the paper aside and then I went back to it. I added these little backgrounds, which I thought looked kind of like wiring diagram-esque, although they're technically like a subway design or something like that, but I thought they looked techy. And I used it with my son getting his first like robotics kit. And I thought that was fun. So this is actually a stencil too with a different kind of material in it. This one here, oh, I love this one so much. It is so beautiful to me, okay. Um, succession and heirs. And we talked about things being passed down. And so this, these are my, gra my great grandmother's earrings. And yes, I am wearing them right now because I wear them all the time. And it was fun because I was inspired by somebody that was talking about writing on photos. And so I literally did the whole writing on the photo thing and I ran out of space. And so I added a little extra section, which you probably can't see here. But if I hold it up, you can kind of see there's a seam right there because accidents happen. Whether I was supposed to use it on that page or not, they kind of happen. And I ran out of space and I'm like, no, I need some more space. So I just added a little more. So the real secrets that you get. And isn't this sweet with like the layers and stuff? I love that. Heidi swap paper. Oh, I've been hoarding this one. Needed to use some of it up. And here, this is the page that inspired today. So we're going to look at it in just a second. We'll just look at these two really fast. And this one here was talking about family trees using leaves on layouts. This is my dad with his parents. My journaling is incomplete because I need info from my dad. So I've got some sticky notes in there of some questions that I want to ask him. And this one here was our first one kicking it all off. Um, talking about royals from around the world. Talk about your dominion, what you rule over. Use a map or geotag or something. I did get a geotag on there. And uh, this is very tongue in cheek because my scrapbook room is quite a disaster right now. So explore, search, and discover are literally what I have to do when I'm looking for things in here. So hopefully um, that was kind of fun. I love the paper. It was just super playful. Okay, so this is where we're headed for today. This is where we're headed. Let me put this up. Okay, this is where we're headed for today. So this paper that I created, this kind of like almost mandala effect. Um, I made this for this page. I talked about my name. Our inspiration this day was about family names and how names are passed down. And for the tech prompt, we use Royal Blue or for the technique, yeah. So a super fun aside, I showed my mom this page. <laughs> I just have to tell you this. So I showed my mom this page and it says, my first name was chosen by my mother. She'd had a teacher with the name Alice and she liked it. My middle name is Marion, my mom's name. Mom doesn't have a middle name. These photos are my mom and me at Bedrock City. So it's not like deep journaling. So my mom says, which teacher did I have that was named Alice? <laughs> she literally had no um re like recollection of telling me 
that I was named, like, that she'd heard, like, that she liked the name Alice because, partly because she'd had a teacher named Alice. <laughs> Apparently she didn't remember that. I don't know if she made that story up, if I made that story up, or where that story came from. But, like, now I look at this and I'm just laughing because she's like, no, I didn't have a teacher named Alice. Like, which teacher was that? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Deidre says, I noticed in the comments that the podcast was mentioned. I had to go get my favorite candy for Halloween so I could put the packaging on my page when I scrap about it. Oh my goodness. I love that you use the like actual packaging. So yeah, this is the story that's like behind the story about this page. But here's the fun thing about this page. Let's make it. Let's let's make or something similar in style because I've made this background already. So do I want to make exactly the same one? No, but we'll find a different one that will be similar and we'll talk about how we make it. And like we can kind of talk about some of the other little pages or styles. So I'm going to walk you through my little book here. This is my stencil organization. I say it like, say it loosely. <laughs> it sounds like my childhood memories. It's like, okay, where did that come from? Apparently, I don't know. <laughs> don't know my own history. And so anytime we're telling stories, I guess, it comes down to, do we even really know? <laughs> okay, so this is my stencil storage system. So I thought since we're talking about stencils and playing with stencils, I would show you this really quick. This front one, I literally, when I don't want to put something away because I'm in a rush or being lazy, I tuck them in here and then eventually I go through and I put them in where they belong. Or if I get a new stencil, I tuck them in here until I put them properly into the rest of the system. So I have them kind of by little tabs that I've just made myself and stuck to the edge of the book so I can see the different styles. So there's ones with words and alphas and there's some that have circles, lots of different style of circle ones. Um, this might be a really good one for us to use. Yeah, I was thinking that one might be really great. Um, I have different, ooh, this gear one would be good too. Ooh, ooh. Okay, undecided. <laughs> undecided. We'll come back to those so in the circles. But we could honestly do it with any of these other systems. So this here, okay, I just have to show you. I love this one so much. This one is a Donna Downey Chevrons. And it is the one that I used for this page. And I used mist, and I have to grab something really quick. Um I'm back, I'm back. Um, so you might have seen this page before. So <laughs> I love this so much. Seeing them side by side is what we're gonna do. So when I used the stencil and I used the spray, I created this background. And because all of that ink was sitting on top of the stencil and it just looked like why would I waste all that good ink? I took another piece of paper and I put it on top of there and I created this one. And I just love that I was able to kind of create both of them with that one application. And you can see like how imperfect it is, right? Like there's parts of it that are just not that good. But once you create your layout on there, it's so wonderful, right? Like I look at this and it's like, crazy and wild and look at me like wild heart like I never thought I would have used a title like that in my in my whole life but like I totally had a plan and I'm like yes I'm gonna go jump on the trampoline like a little kid <laughs> because that's what I am on the inside still so this um was super fun oh that's funny my phone is ringing yes it's uh phenomena <laughs> I almost never have it um, where you can actually even hear it. So that's really funny. Um, but yeah, so this one here, well, it has like the imperfections and they're like on purpose because they're part of that stencil. This one, I don't know. I just loved the craziness of this for this page. And then recently when I wanted to do this page with my brothers, it just was, it seemed like perfect. And then I took this picture and I like really like boosted the color, like with the, 
I don't know, contrast or saturation, saturation. And so that was really fun. So that is kind of fun. I thought that was kind of neat. They're not going to sit side by side in my book. So even if you felt like, gosh, those are somewhat similar, they're never going to be like, oh my gosh, have I seen that before? And if they did be like, yeah, so what? I love it. <laughs> At least that's how I feel about it. So playing with stencils, stencils are super fun. The, ooh, this is the brick one that I used for this page with me with the little princess. This is the brick stencil. And this is ink. I think it was all uh, Tim Holtz Distress Oxide ink. And you can see that I kind of inked it in different color sections so that um, I've got areas that are the blue sections, areas that are the darker pink and lighter pink sections. And it's a little bit of blending across the sections, but um, the magic for that page is the soft brush, like the makeup style brush, blender brush, whatever you want to call it. Super good. <laughs> yeah, totally. Sophia says they would look great as a double page though, too, in her in my humble opinion, I totally think so. Um, and it could almost be like a yin yang kind of page, right? Like they're the, they're similar, but not the same, you know, like, uh, it almost reads like strips. Yeah. I thought this was, yeah, I think it's super fun. Um, yeah, so lots of great, Ooh, this is such a good one too. I've done the same thing with this one too. So what do you think? Should we try this one? with this style with the colors i don't know if that's going to be enough i don't know if it has enough holes in it um i've got some i like the idea of doing a round one so this one here i will confess is actually a small stencil and it makes it a little bit harder oh i do wish i had this one as a 12 by 12 i might have to get that one as a 12 by 12 just like all the little pieces oh i would like that um, did I put it back in here? Good question. Maybe, possibly not. So, oh, looks like I didn't. I wonder if it's sitting right beside it or if I tucked it in the front. Maybe I tucked it in here. Oh, and I haven't. I thought I had it tucked in this book because I'm somewhat good at putting them away. You can see there's a bunch in here. <laughs> okay, but anyways, we'll move on. This one here is literally a quarter of the page. This part is one is the stencil. And then you have to pick it up and clean it and move it and move it. And you tape it down every time. And, you know, so it's really nice. Um, I think what we're going to do is we're going to go and steal the circle geometric -y mandala kind of one we're gonna play with this one today because i haven't done this one <laughs> um libby says i have several of those but you have some i would totally use yeah and at first when i started buying them i think i was like super excited about buying them and then um after a while i kind of learned which ones that i will actually use a little bit more. So I have some that are smaller that I do use, but I like the big ones. I like that full 12 by 12 big effect. That's kind of my, my jam as Sarah Scraps would say, that's my jam. So I definitely, um, go to stuff like that more. So this paper that I'm going to use today is actually, um, Ooh, can you hear it? Oh, so good. Um, it is super stock from K Creative Scrapbooker. So if you go to the Creative Scrapbooker, it's like the magazine. They actually sell the super stock. They sell big packs of it. And I'm talking like big packs of it. <laughs> I can't remember how many sheets are in there. It does tell you, I don't know if it's 25 or something or 50 or whatever it is, but I love the paper. Um, I have not and this is like a sad moment for me. I have not used Sarah's or um, Vicki Booten's mixed media paper yet. I, um, I need to put it in my cart, but I confess buying 
plain white paper is not fun for me. <laughs> That's not my fun. And so when I'm shopping, I don't think to actually buy the necessities and the boring stuff. Like, <laughs> like, I just don't think of it. Here, let's see if I can do this. Oh, I can totally can. Yay. Okay. So, yeah, I don't think to buy the boring stuff. I can't help it. I want to do the fun stuff. Okay, so let's have a look. Um, I'm definitely going to need a mat or probably need a mat. Yes, definitely. So I'm going to show you the way I did this. There are so many ways to do this. Please don't think this is the only way to create um, something of this style. I will show you what I did for this. If you look closely, it has like little brush lines in it, right? Like it's very imperfect. We are going to do kind of dry brush ink technique um, with reinker. You can do this with an ink pad too. I just think that it's easier. Laura says Vicky's paper is hard to find. <laughs> I've been hoarding versus buying stuff. Oh, Vicky Booten. <laughs> I know Vicky Boot and stuff is so good. Oh, I know. Mm. Sometimes I think everything crafty is my jam. <laughs> I know. It's not very often where I run into something like, oh, I would never use that. <laughs> like, even things that are totally like not necessarily my style. Turns out sometimes I have a lot of fun with those things too. <laughs> Okay, so I'm gonna use my purple tape mm, to stick this onto my desktop. Here, let's put this where you can actually see it. That would be helpful. Here. And I'm just gonna stick my corners down. And just up here, I have my pack of reinkers. These are from Close to My Heart. I was a Close to My Heart consultant for, I don't know, like six years, maybe? maybe longer. And I was really good customer before that. So that's kind of why I finally went down the road and finally became a consultant is because um, I really liked shopping with their stuff. So I'm trying to decide now. So you can see here that um, if I just do this as is, there's going to be ink over here. So I need to kind of decide how I want to have my lines. Now, there is like a little beautiful scallopy edge around there, but I think what I'm going to do, and this is going to take a little bit of tape, um, a cherry on top has some of the foundation paper right now. There you go. <laughs> and Missy says I'm shopping Vicky right now. <laughs> there we go. So, um, enabler alert. <laughs> Okay, so I'm actually going to go around and I'm going to tape the edges of this so that I cover up that whole scalloped edge. And that way it's going to be available for me to do whatever I want with it when I figure out what that is. And if I don't use the scalloped edge, I'm not use the scalloped edge. It'll end with a perfect circle. So either way, it's going to be beautiful. Um, but I'm just taking this purple tape. I'm splitting it in half because really like it doesn't need to be that wide um you know it's to your level of messiness that you would have to cover i guess um yeah but i'm gonna go around and tape this and so this is really gonna be taped down but i do recommend if you're playing with a stencil tape it down because oh you will save yourself some heartache i'm just using the flatter edge around the edge of this stencil so that like they're kind of, the flat edges are kind of there. Uh, <laughs> they're like, buy it, buy it. <laughs> if they have it, then buy it. <laughs> yeah. It's like, you know, all the good stuff. It's like when, oh, like even now, <laughs> I never did get my hands on those letters from that Chamel Never Grew Up collection. I wanted those letters so bad when I saw them at creativation I wanted those letters and then I never ended up with those letters and I'm still kind of choked about it <laughs> I did get my hands on a bunch of the collection and you know 
that was good. <laughs> I've played with it, but I never did get that. Ooh, everybody is enabling here. This is wonderful. Look how helpful everybody is. Um, cherry on top has a clock stencil. Um, I think I have, ooh, somewhere. I don't even know. I should probably look it up. I do have a um, an affiliate link for Cherry on Top somewhere, but you know, I can't. I don't. I can't think of what it is off the top of my head. I uh, oh, I know it's on my Scrap Smarter Experience page. Deidre, can you grab that? I don't know if you're busy. If you're on like technology that doesn't allow you to toggle back and forth and stuff, that's fine. Um, yeah. I think on that Scrap Smarter, on the sponsors list. <laughs> there we go. So that is all taped down now. That felt like a ton of tape, but whatever. Um, using it, not hoarding it. So <laughs> that's the difference here. And now I need to kind of pick some colors and I need to decide too if I'm going to be doing my my colors in like rows kind of around that totally could be a thing where I do each row or I could totally do like kind of like the um color wheel oh my gosh okay I have to show you guys something so I found this site that has these pins and she has like a little color wheel pin like how cute is that it's called the gray muse found her on Instagram. But then not only did she have that, I am not affiliate. I am not sponsored. It is like just <laughs> shopping. So there's my, there's my disclaimer. Um, yeah. And then she has one that is literally a color wheel. Look at how fun that is. Like literally color wheel. It tells you your triadic colors, your complementary colors, your, um, analogous colors, your triadic colors. I don't know. It's super fun, right? So it's a pin and it's a color wheel and I just couldn't help it. <laughs> you have me hooked on Roy G. Bev. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> okay. So what I would recommend if you're going to do, like, let's do this color wheel kind of thing, right? Let's kind of do that kind of style, right? I said, that's what I would show. So let's show it. Although I really could, yeah, no, no, we're, we're not gonna. Um, what I would suggest is finding at least two, possibly three colors in each one. If you don't have that, that's okay. Um, I have lots of things. So I definitely have several colors in each color line and having like two or three of them makes the blend go so well. I think I'd used four with my blues. Um, so I've got my purple and I've got my blues. I need some greens. This would be better if they were better organized. I just kind of toss them in here. <laughs> oh, there, there are some greens. And if they're not like maybe your favorite shades of the colors, it's not really going to matter because there's not going to be a lot of them. We're just going to be using them to kind of blend them all together. The other tool that I'm going to be using are these little um, brushes. So that's the other kind of big thing that I use. And they get stained. So if you're concerned, they get stained. These are disposable and all, although I don't dispose them. This is a making memories one that I've probably had, I'm not even guessing like more than 10 years, guaranteed more than 10 years, because I used to have the little bottles of paint, <laughs> their acrylic paint, and that's from there. So, you know, it's totally fine. You, you don't have to like feel bad. <laughs> I don't feel bad. <laughs> okay, and heading out of the orangey colors, I went from orange to pink to red, and I thought that was a good blend, especially if you have colors that are pinky orangey color. So I've got this one from close to my heart called Smoothie. I don't know what their current colors are. Sorry, I'm not up to date on it. Um, but there's cranberry, cotton candy, hollyhocks, another pink one, and then poppy and pomegranate. 
Oh, and there's a ruby. Okay. So I think we've got plenty. We've got plenty. We got all kinds of colors. We have all kinds of colors. So probably too many. It's okay though. So basically we're going to be looking at this in quadrants and splitting it up. Virginia says, I have to go, but I wish I could stay. The replay will be up automatically. They just like magically show up there on YouTube. So you can grab the replay, whatever you want, and just like skip forward to where we left off right here. So it's um, 50 minutes in, so just skip forward like 50 minutes and you'll be good. And then you can catch the rest of this. Okay, so now we're gonna take my brushes and we're gonna just dry brush the color. But we're gonna kind of think about quadrants as we do this. And like, if it helps you, you can like take like a piece of paper towel or something and be like this quadrant, like I wanna make kind of straightish lines, right? And you can kind of just use your paper towel or something to kind of draw, draw your quadrants on. <laughs> and we're gonna start down here with my purples and this is our inspiration right this is our inspiration one there we go okay so as i'm looking at my colors um i've got these three shades of purple what's really important is to think about which colors are going which way so this purple is a little more bluish so we're going to go blue that way and this one is a little more reddish so we're going to go red this way and then I'll just stick this one in the middle. So that's kind of the plan for those. And then that's just kind of how I attack all of the colors <laughs> as we go through this. Um, yeah. So I don't want these to be too, too covered. But And then I do have a spray bottle handy and my paper towel is also handy so that I can clean these as I go, but this time I just thought for the sake of um, doing this, I probably last time I only used maybe three, four different brushes. Like I didn't clean them very much, but I also didn't change them very much because you kind of still want that color to blend. So it's not necessarily, sorry, I know I'm off the camera. Um, it's not necessar necessary for you to kind of um, change them as much as you might think. I'm going to go back to just this view so that you can see a little bit more of it. <laughs> so I'm going to start by just taking a little bit of this ink and I just put it like here on my mat. That's what craft mats are good for, right? And then this one here, it doesn't really have a center point. So I'm going to just draw uh, with my pencil here, a little center point so that I can kind of see that. And then I'm just going to dry brush it down and kind of swipe it. And you'll see, like, depending on where you're starting, you're going to have different um, dark areas and light areas. But it's, like, totally um, okay to have that. And right now, like, this looks like, oh, my gosh, that is so dark. But as it dries, it's not going to look so crazy dark and in this quadrant right here this quarter I'm only going to do about um one eighth of it I guess with the colors because I've technically changed my Roy G Biv a little bit by adding pink I've made eight colors which fit really nice into the quadrant so that's like a perfect little cheat <laughs> and if you don't have all the different shades of the colors, like I said, it's totally okay because what happens is you're going to be kind of blending between the colors. So say you only have like one shade of purple, two shades of blue, you'll see as we kind of go around here, same brush, same color, but that's okay because we're going to be spreading some of that other color into our next color. And you'll notice I go one way, then sometimes I go the other way. And sometimes you'll see that I'll take this lighter color and swoop it back into the darker color and kind of go across there. And then I'll go a little bit further than maybe you think you need to go with a little bit of that color. And then I'll go to 
my final purple shade and we'll kind of finish up. Did I use all the same color? No. Okay. And it, so one thing that I might have an issue with is the center on this one, but that's going to be a, like a great opportunity to put like something else right? Like maybe that's where I have like a really colorful little, um, embellishment of some kind that kind of just goes into that space. So it's not like really a big deal if, um, if I have like a mucky middle on this, it's just going to get covered with something. I'll find something awesome to stick in the middle and then the whole page will be like, Oh, you know, a little bit of shiny or sparkly and, and it'll just like totally look totally intentional. Right. Okay. So here's one of the things you're going to get ink on your fingers. It's going to happen. Like you can be really careful, but it's still probably going to happen. So <laughs> just so you know, okay, let's move those colors. We're heading into blues. I'm going to start with my darkest shade of blue first and We'll pick up a little bit of that and just mix it right into my brush. And then I'm going to start swiping that in. And as I go into the blues, I'm going to swipe a little bit back into the purple section, right? So that it's not just this one flat color. And if you have lighter colors um, that you that you really want to include, like these ones are all quite dark and I'm using like major thick kind of, not thick application because I am dry brushing it. But as I go, um, if I wanted to have lighter colors popping in there, you can actually like add your lighter colors in a little bit more once these ones set a little bit so that you kind of create a little bit more texture and depth. Mm, I don't know if that makes. Okay, now this is pretty dark, right? Cause it's got so many of those dark, dark colors on it. So I'm gonna want this to be a little bit lighter. So I'll just get off a bunch of that ink before I load in my next my next color and we're gonna brush it across okay so there we go we've already got through our purple and our blue section so you can see like even if you don't have like three colors it would totally be fine like just to do a slightly wider and just do a little bit more crossing over so it's not even like you're blending the stuff together you're just kind of layering it over and allowing the colors to kind of coexist together um we've got some greens here this is kind of olivey green i don't know I think I'll pick a different green. This one might be better. And then we're going to brush this one in. Okay. So now that I have, um, that section as I head into this one, let's, uh, start brushing this in towards the center here and you'll see like instead of using the flat part um, it's very much like I am using kind of like the knife edge kind of part of the brush so I'm kind of creating smaller little dragging sections which I think looks cool so <laughs> I don't know if that's like a technique or anything like that <laughs> But I think it looks cool. It's so beautiful. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> I think that this is like super fun and pretty easy, right? Like I like easy. Easy is good. 
Um, when I switch from the green to the yellow here in a second, I will grab a new brush because that is like one transition that probably won't, um, won't handle well, <laughs> but going between the colors, right? And we got a little bit of pear, so topiary, pear, I've got all these colors. So a question that I would love to know is, do you have reinkers and have you used them for anything other than reinking? <laughs> because when I bought reinkers, everybody's like, oh, look at all the fun things you can do with reinkers. And then I almost never use them. <laughs> it's terrible. I almost never use them. And so I'm just going back with some of this green to mix it in to some of the other areas a little bit too. And it looks really, yeah, I think it looks really good like that. Okay, so let's get this green off of here. I'm gonna grab a new brush. This is the one that I finished on green, but um, I don't really wanna have a whole bunch of that going into my next colors with it being yellows. Make sure to click on the like button, Diane. That is so sweet. <laughs> yeah, they have, uh, in case you haven't found it, oh, they're doing all this. The Stencil Ring Doily Code TCW460. I probably could have told you it's probably in my book. I do write it on a little label so that I know where they go. So I, I could have totally mentioned that. But thank you so much. That is so helpful. <laughs> Uh, Libby says I have some. I've never opened them even to re-ink. Well, hopefully this inspires you and you're like, oh, Alice is not a genius at this. I could do that too. <laughs> like, she's, that's just, she's just brushing that stuff on. <laughs> because I think, um, you know, sometimes we see people's stuff and it looks like so impressive. It's like, that's overwhelming. I don't have those kind of skills. It's like when I look at Missy Witt and stuff, I'm like, oh my gosh, she is just so talented. <laughs> but like when you actually watch her or if you do some of those things and you're like, oh, well, I can do that. <laughs> and so it's just a matter of like actually taking the time. And you can see, I don't have like a bunch of special materials. I do have like one of these mats. You could do it without the mat. You could be mixing your colors on something else. You wouldn't have to have the mat. So literally the mat isn't even a requirement, but I have the mat, so I'm using it. Okay, did I use, I think I used saffron there. Okay, uh, let's use my cream brulee next. I don't even know. Are these practically the same color? <laughs> oh, they're practically the same color. Okay, well, I guess my yellow is going to look a little boring. <laughs> and then canary. Canary should be different. Maybe I needed to find a different yellow. Maybe I can add a little touch more yellow in afterwards. Okay, so I'm going to try to keep this somewhat vertical here. Okay, so that's like going to be okay, right? It's going to look straight enough for our eyes, I think. <laughs> so that it's not too obnoxious. Okay, and let's bring a little bit of the yellow across the green. Do I want to try to bring a little green cross into the yellow? Am I that brave? <laughs> sure. Okay. Not too bad. Okay. Um, now we've done our yellow. Uh, <laughs> I love that you're searching these things out. It's like, what is that stencil called? The Crafters Workshop, and it was what? What did you say? 460 or something like that? <laughs> okay, so now we're heading into our oranges. Our orange section. Oh, did I miss something? Okay, let's see. Orange. Oh, I did more blue and green. I think, no, it's going to be good. So i've got reds i've got pinks i've got orange so that's only three colors guys did i say i had four i thought i said i had four <laughs> apparently i can't count uh i don't know if i did as many blues on this one 
Although it looks like I did a lot more green on that one. I think we're good. Um, because I have lots of pinks and, and oranges and stuff like that. So this is going to be fine. Um, maybe I'll just pull in one more pink color. So we're going to transition from our oranges. So I'm going to pick the ones that are more yellowy orange first and go to more orangey and then go to more, um, pinkish as I go towards the pink colors. So that's the plan there. Um, I could probably put this up here as I'm coming up this way. That might make more sense. <laughs> I love it when we have people that do like all this extra, like research. Okay. definitely heading into our oranges here and so if you don't have reinkers and you want to try this use your ink pads totally works totally fine with an ink pad nothing is like exclusive for this and especially if you're doing like a dry brushing kind of effect like this that's going to work really well with um, an ink pad as well because uh, you don't necessarily need it like all super wet and goopy. Um, you might have a lighter effect to it. Like you, you might not get the, the vibrancy of the color if you're, if you're br dry brushing from something like that, like from an ink pad. But I think that that's okay. Okay. Oh my gosh. This is going to be so pretty. I don't even know what I'm going to do um, around the edge. So I need to think about that. Maybe I should do like a gray or a black or something that really makes it like pop or something. That could be good, right? Oh, I don't know which color I've got where now. <laughs> what is that? Okay. So now we're going into the sorbet. Oh, it looks like more orangey than that other one did. Okay, let's take another piece of paper towel. You know, if you have a cloth or something and you didn't want to use like all this paper towel, you probably could. But um, for the sake of doing this on camera, <laughs> like this is my easiest option because ink is like pretty vibrant. <laughs> okay, so now I'm going to use some smoothie pink. Mm. Get enough of it out there. Okay, so you can see how this is taking us from the orangey ones over to the pinky colors now. And we're going to use, I think this is too many pinks, maybe. I don't know. Maybe not. Is there, is that even a thing? <laughs> It's not even a thing. I'll have to read my um, a ridiculous um, collection of stencils and give this a go. That would be wonderful. And please, if you post it or something, um, definitely tag me. Like if you're on Instagram, you can tag me at Alice Bowl. It's B-O-L-L. -L. Uh, I love to see when people are like, hey, I did that thing you did. And uh, usually I'm like, oh, you, you made it better. <laughs> Like, hmm, I gotta step up my skills, but that's good because that pushes me to try new things and it's like, oh, that's a good idea. That's the thing, like so many people with so many good ideas, the internet's amazing. And so lots of times when you're seeing me do this, like I have these little moments where I'm like, oh, did I ruin it? <laughs> I've thought that about a million times already as I've been making this. So just so you know, 
that's a normal feeling. It happens. And no, it's not getting ruined. <laughs> you could cut it out and place it. Oh, one was rainbow stripe. Oh, yeah. See this and this will look way different um, with this style. Ooh, this is a bright color. <laughs> Oh, I was expecting that. Which one did I just pick? <laughs> okay. Okay, and crossing over here. Okay, am I about ready to head into my red section? Probably. Maybe I'll do a little touch of this one because it's a little on the darker side of pink. And then I'll go into my Oh, yeah. That looks good. So fun. Okay, now just the reds and then we can uh, either figure out what to do with the edges or I can just leave it round and just like not take advantage of that really pretty little scallopy edge. I don't know. Suggestion. <laughs> I'm open to suggestions. There's probably somebody that's like, oh, oh you, I know what you need to do. <laughs> I think what I need is like gold paint or something. I don't have like a gold ink, but um, a gold paint would be like really fun around the edge of this, right? To make it, make it shiny. The black, I still think black would be good. I'm leaning towards the black idea. Uh, <laughs> cut out strips on a deep blue from Vicky Booten. Uh, yeah, her stuff is so good. Okay, this looks almost done. Let's see, I've got cranberry left, and then I'm gonna finish with pomegranate. And here we go, the final color going on. Oh, I don't even know if that one's as dark. I thought the pomegranate was darker than this one, but I don't know if it is. I wish I had done those ones in backwards order. Oh well, they're, they're on here now. <laughs> and you'll see that I'll brush a little bit of the red across into the other color. Okay, this is da, 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 moment of truth. It's looking pretty good. I'm quite happy. <laughs> I am quite happy here right now. I gotta clean off this ink before I throw my hand into it. And let's see. If we can convince this to come off here. And lifting a template is another great way to get ink on your hands. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's so beautiful. <laughs> oh my gosh, it is so beautiful. Check it out. Oh. So good. I don't even mind the middle. I thought that was going to be like ugly in the middle with all the colors kind of coming in there. And of course, you know, I got a little ink there, but um, I might be able to just sand that off right there as long as I don't touch it with any more of these fingers. <laughs> Ooh, so pretty. I know. <laughs> so yeah, I could always re like put it back on like the stencil after I clean it. And then, um, 
add in like the the edge but i don't even know i think i'm just gonna not mess with this this is too pretty so that turned out so good and i just i love it so inspiration page inspiration page let me see is there a safe place i can't even set it on the counter because nothing here is gonna be safe right now inspiration piece to this like how gorgeous and those like colors oh my goodness and like one thing that i can say is like if you're doing like colors where um you have color families that can be a really good um way to go about using something like this but it's also a good way to mix your color families so you'll notice like these colors that i used um they were not one color family so you can have like say your brights and your pastels and then your like fall kind of like muted tones and mix a little bit of all of them into something like this so if you have different color families this is a really good way to kind of play with them all together so it looks amazing it looks great i agree i love it as it is it looks almost 3d yeah <laughs> It does, right? And like, it's so funny, like those white lines, they just look so good. <laughs> so yeah, that is the super fun stuff. Um, I don't think we're going to get into the Halloween thing today. I don't really have that much to show. I'm just gathering some old photos. I had a little album. Okay, I'll show you the little album. Uh, I had a little album that I made ages ago and I was going to try to finish it, but then I decided no. It's just too small for what I want to do. I have like a stack of photos already, but it was like super cute. Um, back from my close to my heart days actually. And I wanted to like actually fill out the album, but I think I'm going to steal the pages, turn them into some 12 by 12s because I have more of this paper. And then I'm going to um, put all of my Halloween pictures in one thing. So that's another project for another day. Yay! So I will have to try this. That is like the ultimate like um, thing that you could have said because that's the whole goal is I show you something, it's really pretty easy and you're inspired to go and do it yourself. Like that is the best compliment ever. So <laughs> thank you. <laughs> so fantastic. Uh, thank you so much to everyone for joining me today. Like I said, if you are... Um, not on the email list so you get notifications about things like that i am actually getting a little bit better about sending stuff out so you can get on the email list here and then you can also connect with me on instagram at alice bowl and um thank you so much for joining me today Yay. <laughs> i have loved this so 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 much and i really appreciate you um being here and spending time oh i'm t pressing the wrong buttons that's our, there we go um spending the time with me and hopefully this was inspiring and whether um and if you try it show me i'd love to see so have a fabulous day and happy scrapping everyone bye